Hallelujah. How's everybody doing? Are you blessed and highly flavored and favored and anointed and appointed? Praise God. I want to remind everyone about the newsletters in case you didn't get one or you want someone sent to someone. Uh, get us the addresses. It's been kicking butt. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you grab your swords tonight and turn to Ezekiel somewhere? Let's see. Turn to James instead. Turn to James chapter 1. James 1. James chapter 1. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, we saw the outcome of the Super Bowl. Amen. Hallelujah. The fake Patriots lost. <laughs> They're called dwellers. The true Patriots won. You know, you think about this. There is such a battle in the unseen realm that many people don't see what's going on. They have no idea. But there's connection prophetically in everything. First of all, Philadelphia was a place where the Constitution was signed. Think about that. The eagle represents a Christian. The coach is a Christian. They are a praying team. The quarterback was going to be a pastor, and the Lord told him to become a football player. They're anointed. It's God's time. It's God's showing right now. The victory that is happening. The overcoming that's happening. Now because of so many things that are taking place, because right now, light, the glory of God, God's kingdom is beginning to overtake many areas since God put Trump in office because it was a divine intervention. To rescue this country from takeover and to connect back with Israel so that a great resistance can be manifested. Everyone say, I'm a part of the true resistance. We are the resistance. We are the ones who are resisting. We are holding back. We are pressing back. There is an invasion going on, and it's light and invasion in darkness. There's a kingdom of God invading the kingdom of Satan. Now, you've got to understand because Satan rules the earth, right? So that means he rules the economy. He rules the stock market. There are 13 bloodlines of Satan's king, uh, family. You got the Rothschilds and so forth, and you got all those foolishness in Britain with kings and so forth, you know, and all these whatever, wannabes, fakes, gods, and goddesses. And one of the things that just occurred, the stock market came down. The first time it came down, I want to tell you how many points it came down. 666. That was the resistance of the enemy trying to show us, trying to combat and come against. There are so many things that are going on, people have no idea what's happening. They're lost, they're caught up in their world and their own stuff, not seeing what's really happening. But it is happening. And this is the resistance right now. In James chapter 1 and verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation. Enduring temptations means you're what? You're resisting. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life with which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away. Why is he drawn away? Because he did not what? Resist. 
He is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. That when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full blown, gives birth to what? Death. Death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, <laughs> that, we, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his resistance. So, that, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside. When you lay something aside, it means you are resisting. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls and do what? Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Blessed is the man that resists temptation. You can't overcome unless you first resist. Does everybody get it? People are trying to overcome when they haven't resisted yet. It doesn't work that way. We are resisting the powers of darkness. Jesus was a resistor. He was the lead of all resistance. And it started the resistance against the evil kingdom of the fallen angels. We are not fighting man. We are fighting fallen angels and their offsprings. Amen? Amen. Who are using men. These are self-proclaimed gods and goddesses. Think about this. Eve did not overcome because she didn't resist. Somebody get it? She couldn't overcome because she didn't resist. She tried to argue with him instead of resist him. She tried to convince him. And you can't convince a demon. And you can't convince a fallen angel. You must resist it. Lucifer is a fallen angel. Amen? Praise God. We are in a move called the resistance right now. Acts chapter 9. This is not just one territorial resistance. This is a global resistance. Global. In verse 1 and 2. This is talking about Saul who became Paul because he had a visitation from the Lord. He slammed him off his horse. In verse 1, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found anyone who were of the what? The way, in other words, who are of the resistance. Does everybody get it? Whether men or women and children, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem and they would be killed, tortured, or put in prison. We are of the way. It is the resistance against evil authority. Amen? It is the what? Resistance against evil authority. Authority. In Proverbs 16. Hallelujah. The resistance. In verse 17. Now, we'll start at verse 15. Is everybody there? Proverbs what now? 16. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, verse 17. Let's speak it. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Departing from evil is resistance. Now, look at the next verse. He who keeps his what? 
his way. In other words, he who keeps his resistance preserves his what? His soul. Does everybody understand that? That's where we are required to be consistent, alert, and vigilant. Depart from evil, keeps his resistance against the evil influences, preserves his soul. That's what the word of God says. And you are to keep, the, the devil can't touch you if you keep yourself, what? In a steadfast place of resistance. Too many people don't. They're easily overcome. Because there isn't a standard. They're not in a place of resistance all the time. They've fallen in a place of compromise, complacency, and laziness. And when you fall in that place, then you become soulish, and everything is associated with you and how you feel instead of laying on what truth is. In John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Jesus said to them, I am the what? I am the way. I'm the resistance. I am the truth and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except for what? Through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Oh, Jesus said, I am the resistance. The resistance of what? evil powers of darkness. I'm the resistance. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Behind me, Satan. <laughs> he was resisting the influence. He said, what? You are mindful of the things of men, not the things of God. Because he became soulish. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. Let's speak it together. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the what? The devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Why? Because he resists him. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In other words, he doesn't let sin have dominion over him. He's constantly resisting the influence and temptation. He's resisting the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and pride of life. He's resisting the worldly influence. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and fulfill the move of the resistance. Remember, we are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system. Now, the world system is associated with the economic, the political, the governmental the labor force, and, and so forth. Why? Because we're to infiltrate, to rescue souls. We have entered the largest move of resistance against the Nephilim fallen angel race since they were thrown out of the third heaven. That's pretty wild, isn't it? That's wild. Sometimes we don't even, we don't even comprehend it. We don't even get it. We are a part of the resistance. What did the Lord do? The Lord destroyed in the resistance all of the Nephilim and Rephilim and their offsprings in the flood. God did that. After that, when they came back because they'd come through and they started to reproduce again, and now you got technology and you got hybrids and you've got test tube offsprings and all kinds of stuff. God's body is now on the, cry, on, the, on the earth. After Jesus paid the price, now his body is here. And his body is now the resistance. We are the resistance to rescue. Without resistance, you can't overcome. Oh, hallelujah. 
in Revelation 12. This is where you must self-examine. Am I resisting every area, every thought? What does the word say? Take every thought into captivity and cast it down. That is warfare. Are we resisting those thoughts? Are we resisting oppression? Are we resisting fear? Fear will nullify everything. Oh, hallelujah. When you start feeling sick, are you battling and resisting it? Doesn't mean that you won't get it. But sometimes you can overcome it before it overtakes you. Amen? Or it may not overtake you that much. Or you will recover sooner if you keep resisting. In verse 7, Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in where? Heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Why? Because they were thrown out. God resisted their pride and threw them out of the third heaven. In verse 9, So the dragon was cast out, the, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So war is resistance. Everyone say war, war. is resistance. Battle is resistance. What do we resist? Satan's kingdom. Still, to this day, it deceives the whole world. But my, it, it, why? Listen, it, maintaining a hidden state of being using man, deceived by false doctrines, agendas, promises, false entitlements, to do his bidding. That's what he does. <laughs> and he puts him in a place in a state of love of money where now money becomes their God. There's been an exchange. Why? Because there was no resistance. Now they're in survival mode instead of surrender mode. And they become in bondage. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, they did not resist. You never... If, if you ever thought about, if you would have resisted the first drink, if you resisted the first cigarette, if you would have resisted the first hit of dope, if, you, if we would have just resisted the first one, we would have never got where we ended up. <laughs> Finally, we resisted after we bumped off enough walls, dragged through enough bushes, been run over enough. <laughs> in jail enough, lost everything multiple times. Then we decided, well, I think it's time I start resisting. Amen. This ain't working for me no more. <laughs> Can't hold a job. Now you're living <laughs> in the wrong arena, wrong realm, hanging around with the same people. And finally, when you decided to resist, it was a place like, man, I got to get out of way from these individuals that are influencing me. I got to get away from everything. I got to, I, now I got to, that's it. Why? Because you want to maintain a life of resistance. And I see so many stop, compromise, become lazy and complacent. They stop resisting. Oh, hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6, is everybody there? In verse 6, we'll start there. Hallelujah. Now what? Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be what? Rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drawn men <clears throat> in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. 
for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O men and women of God, flee these things. Flee these things is what? Resist. Resistance. Flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight. Is fight resist? Yeah. The good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. I command those who are rich in this present age not to be what? Haughty. Nor to trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they be, may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Resist. We are the resistance right now. We're the resistance that's penetrating. And you're starting, it starts with prayer. It starts with warfare and prayer. You can't go anywhere and resist unless you start with prayer first. Amen? The love of money is the root of all evil. No resistance because of no connect with the Father by the Spirit in His presence. They may get a knowledge connect, but not a presence connect. And that's two different things. That's why people who say they know the truth aren't free. They know the truth, but they're not free because they can't put the truth into practice because they lack the connective presence. They may be connected knowledge, but no connecting presence. And that's the difference. That's how people become religious. In Ephesians chapter 5, The resistance. Everyone say, we are the resistance. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, be what? Imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But what? Fornication. Did they resist? No. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Why? Because they did not resist. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. If he's asking you not to be a partaker with them, he's telling you to resist. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. So is exposure resistance? Yes. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. 
But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you the light. And I believe that there is an awakening, tremendous awakening right now in this resistance movement. I don't, I, I, I'm telling you, I've never seen so many people pray for a president. I've never seen so many people pray for the removal of the ungodly. It is happening. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wow. Therefore, do not be what? Unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine. Resist the alcohol. Resist the cigarettes. Resist the dope. That's why they call it dope. People become stupid. Resist. Right? And just get filled with the Spirit. And do not be drunk with wine, and which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wow. Expose is resistance. In James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Somebody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? How do the desires come from pleasure? Are they, those are things that, of course, the flesh is always desiring the things of the flesh. Amen. So that battle is always within you. It's constant. But if you stay filled with the Spirit of God, it's been resisted automatic, automatically. So then the devil has to try to attack you from the outside since you have dominion on the inside. Does everybody get it? So you must uh, uh, resist him on the outside while having dominion on the inside. Because if you don't have dominion on the inside, you aren't going to have dominion on the outside. Verse 2. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, you, yet you do not have because you do not what? Ask. You ask and don't receive. In other words, God ain't going to give it to you. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your Lack of resistance. <laughs> and it ain't going to increase your resistance. It's going to increase, increase your lack of resistance. And God will not reward on resistance. If there's such a word. We'll use it for tonight anyways. What does he say? Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Why? Because they're not resisting the influence of the world. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. So wait a minute. If God resists the proud, should you? Yes. Yes. But gives grace to the humble. Now, grace, we know, is not unmerited favor. Hello? It's unmerited grace. But it's God's plan. So he gives more of God's plan to what? Escape. Now, think about this. If God is resisting the proud, but he's giving grace to the humble, and he's giving more information, he's giving more revelation to battle, what's he doing? He's increasing their resistance. Does everybody get this? So he's given us more and more stuff to increase our resistance and helping us to penetrate places to resist more. Therefore what? 
Submit to who? To God and what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So do you expect to resist the devil without submitting to God? You'd have to be an idiot to think the other way. People try to do it, though. Let me tell you something. When a person says, I'm ready, they're dangerous. You know why? Because it's self-confidence. That means there's a lack of resistance. Does everybody get that? Our confidence is not in us. Our confidence is in him. I'm never ready for anything, but I'll do anything. Does everybody get it? <laughs> We're to be ready in season and out of season. Ready in that arena means I'm submitting to whatever, I'll do whatever it takes. That's what ready means. I'll do whatever it takes. It doesn't mean that we're ready. We're never ready. Does everybody get this? We should always, if, if we're in a place of consistency, alertness, we are living a life of resistance. Who's your worst enemy? You. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We're our worst enemy. Sometimes the devil doesn't have to do nothing. <laughs> he just stands there and watches and takes video. Probably brings his own popcorn and watches a whole movie. Why people beat themselves up. He just leaves a baseball bat, little guilt, shame, condemnation. You know. And people, ah, he just says, whoa. Then he calls everybody else over. And, they all, and then they have a whole room full of demons watching an individual they ain't touched yet. Because self has overtaken them. Oh, glory. <laughs> Submit to God to resist the devil. Proverbs 3. Verse 1. Gosh. Proverbs 3, verse 1. Okay. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Are you sure? <laughs> Not there Come on, I know it's in my Bible. All right, let's speak it. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my what? Commands. Commands. For length of days... And long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Man, there's a place you've got to resist. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Is departing from evil resistance? Yes. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Hello. <laughs> so many people think that everything they have is theirs because they worked for it. Everyone say, I don't own anything. I'm just a steward of the Lord's product. That's it. We're a steward of his warehouses. We're our stewards. That's all we are. You and I don't own stinking nothing. In fact, most of us, the bank owns it all. <laughs> Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. And your barns will be what? Filled with plenty. See, people can't resist that. They don't realize that their barns will be filled with plenty if they would just submit to this. But see, there's that love of money. It doesn't have to be a lot of love of money. <laughs> it just has to be a seed of love of money. Now, there's nothing wrong with having money. As long as money doesn't, you don't serve money, money serves you. Verse 10, it says, And your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will what? 
overflow with new wine. That's anointing. That's more wine. That's not physical wine, spiritual wine. Are you ready for 11? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. Whoa. When resistance stops, chastening comes. Make sure you write that down. You may wonder, man, I don't get it. Why is the Lord chasing me? I feel like he's just chasing me. There's something I did wrong. Because you stopped resisting. When resistance stops, chastening comes. Now, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. Same thing with correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Hallelujah. So when resistance stops, what comes? Chastening. Now, if your heart's hard, you won't sense it. And if, if you've got a hardened heart, you won't sense anything. You'll just dilly-dally along everything. Oh, God, life is just good. Go do whatever you want. Never really seek the Lord or seek counsel first before certain things. Just la, 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 la. It's because resistance is not there. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Second Thess, chapter 2, verse 1. Now, concern, now, my brother, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Restraining is resisting. Amen? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. That he is capital letter, that means the body of Christ that's here on the earth is the, is the restrainer or the resister. And one day we will be taken out of the way with the rapture. So when there's no more resistance, all hell's going to break out. Then the lawless one will be revealed when the, and, and the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion. I'm telling you right now, there's a strong delusion. There's a tremendous strong delusion out there. Tremendous. People have been taken up with the left agenda. It's phenomenal. Nothing but perverse mouths and liars. And that's what you see all the time. Violent. Disrespectful. For this reason, God sent them strong delusion that they might believe the lie. And they have believed the lie. That's why I call them the Democratic Party. Hello. <clears throat> that they might all be condemned 
who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. How many of y'all know lying is unrighteousness? How about rebellious towards God? You know, I, I, I was talking to someone today and I said, you know what? What happened to judging by fruits? What happened to that? What happened to all the Christians that know the word but don't judge by fruit and still judge by how they feel? What happened to judging by the fruit? If you don't judge by the fruit, then you can't resist. You know, not a part of the resistance. Is everybody cool? But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. In other words, you must maintain a place of resistance. Amen? Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Every good word and work. Again, to restrain is to resist. This move of resistance is global move. To expose, resist, restrain, and drive out evil forces of Satan's kingdom. Now, God is using Trump to do this right now. Do you know that there's, now I think, I, I just heard today, I think there's over 12,000 sealed indictments. That's a lot of people that are going to get pulled out, and they have no idea. It can't be done all at once. It caused too much of a problem. But bit by bit, that's why they opened Guantanamo Bay. And that's where they're going to be sending them. You've heard of the planes already stopping and turning around and so forth. They're taking people off of planes and everything. This is treason. You're going to find that a lot of our political individuals have committed treason. I'm waiting for them to arrest Obama because he's one of the leaders of that regime. And Clinton will go along with him and all the rest of them. It's common. I don't know if you heard about the prophecy about five presidents. I think two or three of them will be arrested and the other ones will be taken down. These prophecies are coming to pass. It was prophesied in 2007 that Trump would become president and he would run for two terms and he would build the wall. But you got to understand this. The devil knows prophecy. And he's going to resist against them. But we are the resistance against them. Like I said, this is the greatest move of resistance against the powers of darkness on the earth since they were thrown out of heaven. God's greatest resistance was in the flood. This is the second greatest resistance or the greatest resistance after the flood. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Peter 5. And you know what the cool thing is? We're in it. Come on, we are a part of the last, the end time resistance for the largest harvest that's coming to pass. We've entered seven years of plenty. There'll be seven years of plenty, just like in the time of Joseph. Then you know that there's seven years of famine coming. <laughs> Who knows, it may get split in half, I don't know. <laughs> God's got a plan, but we're in it. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. 
Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him for he cares for you. So to humble yourself means you must resist pride. Verse 8, be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent. Listen, to be alert, and be, you got to be consistent. If you can't resist, you can't be consistent. If you're an individual that does things according to how you feel, you are not a resistor. You'll be a submitter to evil. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What does it say? Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one. Isn't that nice to know that you're not the only one? Listen, think about this. If the whole body was in a full-blown resistance, there would be no more North Korea. It'd be one peninsula. There'd be more pe I mean, the enemy wouldn't be in so many places. We'd be driving them out of all of them if the whole body would resist. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you so you are consistent in resistance. Amen? Again, we must be alert, consistent to resist the demonic influence of evil. Hmm. We can't fall into compromise, complacency, or laziness. That means that resistance is slacked. It's lacking. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy two two. Verse one. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who are able to teach others also. Now, if a person is considering faithful, are they an individual that can resist? Yes. See, the fruit of resistance is faithfulness. You therefore must endure. If you're going to endure, do you got to resist? Yeah. Yeah. You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. In other words, you must resist the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider that. What I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Hmm. Entanglements of this life concerns lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. We are to resist these misleading and distracting things that prevent us from fulfilling the full call of the life that God has given me and you. That's why he, he said, what does he say? Deny yourself. That means resist. Pick up the cross and follow. And Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 31. Psalm 18, verse 31. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For who is God except the Lord, 
And who is a rock except our God? It is God who does what? He arms me with strength and makes my resistance perfect. See, when you see that word way, you're going to begin to see it as resistance. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge my path under me. My feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies. He could have ran, but he pursued. He resisted fear. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with the strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord. But he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as dust before the wind and cast them out like dirt in the streets. He pursued his enemies. He overtook them. Why? Because he was one who was involved in the resistance. He was a resistor. We are the resistance that is happening right now through intercessory prayer to wherever you go. That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit of God so that the presence of God. Remember, many people are connected by the knowledge of God but not connected by the presence of God and that's two different things. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter four. We are the resistance. That's why they hate you. They persecute you. They lie about you. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse sixteen. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, we do not what? Lose heart. We don't fall back. We resist and take territory. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is a but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and great weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So you are resisting. How can you resist if, if you don't judge by fruit? If you don't judge by fruit, how can you resist then? Amen? That's how we discern certain things. We resist the ungodly fruits, the ungodly fruits of the voice, the ungodly fruits of a presence, the ungodly fruits of a person, the ungodly fruits of an event. We resist those things because they're not, they're, we know that the influence is not of God and we only accept those things that are from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, hallelujah. We are going to speak the third Dimensional warrior prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody ready? Amen. I'm going to speak it and you're going to repeat it. Because we're going to sow, then we're going to reap. This is going to seal. It's called the icing on the cake. <laughs> I am strong in grace. I am, grace. I am a leader, am a leader. <clears throat> that is being led, being led. And I desire to lead others. Lead others. I'm always waiting for the next command to obey. I do not respond to reason or lack of understanding, but I'm willing to submit to the next command with all trust. I see hardship as an advancement of the kingdom. I do not engage myself 
with worldly lusts, emotions, words, vows, traditions, cultures, or fantasies. I am cultivated by the eternal kingdom, knowing the world is polluted to the purity of Christ. I strive for perfection, order, stability, unity, steadfastness, and honor my king, always focusing on pleasing my God and rightly interpreting his words according to his time and season. I am empowered with grace to advance beyond one's limitation. I'm a scatterer of evil and a gatherer of righteousness. I'm a king to my territory and a priest to my God. I am loyal, royal, and immovable to the cause of the eternal order. I am nameless, faceless, and a placeless generation. I am dead, but yet live. I am a child of the Most High, a child of the light, and a drinker of the eternal river. I am a seer of things to come and fearless against the darkness. I am a history maker, restorer of the breach of love, and cloaked with humility. I am chosen to be a protector of my border and a, de and a destroyer of demonic immigration. I am a defender of the weak, invader for the rescue, and teacher of the truth. I am born of the Spirit, called before timed. I am armed and dangerous. I am a third dimensional warrior. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Grow for it.